Set Matte is one of the oldest effects there is in After Effects. Matter of fact, it's been in there even before After Effects had track mats. Set Matte was the only way you could create transparency on one layer based on the luminance or alpha channel of another layer. Now, the addition of the track mat feature in After Effects has made Set Matte largely obsolete. However, there's still cases where track mat's better and cases when Set Matte is better. Let's do a quick pro and con so you can see which works best for which situation. Here is a piece of video footage, and here is a butterfly object that we'd like to use as an alpha channel for that video footage. We want the video to play inside the butterfly. First, let's do this using track mats. I need to toggle switches and modes. The shortcut is F4. Then set the mode for the video footage, not the mat, but the layer underneath, to pick either the alpha channel or the luminance value of the layer on top. If I pick alpha channel, you'll see now it cleanly cuts out the video. I can go ahead and set alpha inverted, so it's everything outside of the butterfly. Here's my transparency channel. And I can pick the luminance of the butterfly. In this case, it's kind of dark, so we don't see the video all that clearly through it. But again, it's another option. I'll set it back to alpha. There's several advantages to this technique. One, you can clearly see the pairing between the video and the mat. There's even special icons here in the timeline that shows the relationship between the two layers. Secondly, I can animate the mat on top and it'll be reflected in what's shown in the video underneath. I can move this around. I can even apply effects to the layer on top, such as say, box blur, blur it out. And blurring the mat will affect what is being revealed of the video underneath. So there are definitely advantages to using track mats. Now let's compare this to the set mat effect. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my track mat. You notice that when I turn the track mat on, it automatically turned the butterfly off. I'm going to leave it off for the set mat effect. Select my video footage and pick effect, channel, set mat. Here I get to pick what layer to take my mat from. In this case, I want to use the butterfly. I note that I can pick any layer in my timeline as my mat. It does not need to be residing strictly above my video layer. So there's my butterfly, and there's my alpha cutting it out. Now you might have noticed that this is a bit bigger than it was when I used track mat. That's because set mat defaults to stretching the mat to fit. In this case, my mat is smaller than my video layer, so it is being stretched up to fill the same size as the video layer. If I turn it off, it'll revert back to its normal size. Again, I can use the alpha channel. I can use the luminance value. I can pick any one of the color channels. For example, the blue channel was particularly strong in the butterfly. I'll go back to alpha for now. And you can invert the mat as well. As I mentioned, I can go ahead and move the mat anywhere else in the layer stack. It'll still work. And this gives me a very quick way to check out multiple layers to see who's going to make a better mat. For example, another mat I have existing in this comp is this grunge mat. I'll go ahead and double click it so you can see it. Scale it down. I got this from DV Garage's Surface Toolkit. Kind of a fun mat. I'll go back to my composite here, turn it off, select my video layer with set mat, and say, hey, let's use that other layer instead. And let's go ahead and use its luminance and stretch it to fit. And now I've got a nice old stained or cracked mirror sort of effect. Another great thing about using set mat is that you can use it multiple times on multiple layers and all point to one layer as the mat. So if you've got one layer that you know you're going to use multiple times in a composition, set mat may be a better solution because you just need to apply set mat to all of the affected layers. You don't need to make track mat pairings every single time you want to reuse that mat. Okay, here's some of the disadvantages. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the butterfly for now. Go back to alpha channel and I'll turn off stretch mat to fit. One problem is that set mat is a compound effect and we have an entire separate special topic movie on compound effects. Compound effects look at other layers before transformations or effects. In other words, if I was to take my butterfly and scroll its position, this has nothing to do with the mat. It's looking at it before I've done any position transform to that layer. Another problem is if I go ahead and turn on my effect and blur the butterfly. Again, that has no effect on the mat. If I want to take things like animations of the mat and effects of the mat into account, I need to set up my animations, then pre-compose, layer, pre-compose, move all attributes to mat processed, 
Click OK. Now, all of my transformations and effects that are applied to my mat will be taken into account by the set mat effect. This is a bit more work. So there are cases where set mat is a bit more difficult to use. The nice thing about set mat is it does give you more options. For example, track mats were limited to alpha or luminance. Now in the case of set mat, in addition to alpha and luminance, I go ahead and pick all these other properties off of my layer that I'm using as a mat, including the individual color channels. And there's some additional features, such as this composite mat with original. Let me show you what that means. I'll open up the second composition. Here I've got two objects with their own alpha channels. I put the radio and the telephone into pre-comps that are the same size, because set mat is a compound effect, and it wants layers that are the same size to work most efficiently. I'm going to turn off my telephone for now, select my radio, and apply set mat. It was my most recent effect, so it's at the top of the list. I'll go ahead and pick my telephone, and you'll see that the telephone is indeed cutting into the radio. It is compositing a combination of those two mats. If I want to extend out to include the telephone's cord, I turn off composite mat with original, and you'll see that we're now using just the telephone's alpha channel, not the radio's alpha channel. If I turn on composite mat with original, I'm getting the intersection between the telephone's alpha and the radio's alpha. So again, set mat has a few more tricks up its sleeve. Most of the time, I use track mats, but there are occasions where set mat makes life easier.